Wrestling's big event of the year, um, Bound for Glory. Um, as you TNA fans know, we always know Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory was always that. Just in the last big show of the year for TNA, now Impact Wrestling, where they kind of their WrestleMania, their Wrestle Kingdom, you know, their Triple Mania. This year's edition actually was really good. Um, I mean, there's obviously some in any big show like this, you can find flaws with it. Overall, good flow, good matches, nothing really too stupid happened. You do have some storylines coming out of Bound for Glory that's going to carry on during Impact Wrestling as they move to Access TV next week. So overall, I think everything was great. Um, I enjoyed the show, so we're going to run down it. Plus, they had two other shows this weekend. They had on Friday night, they had a uh, Impact Plus special, which ended up being on Fight TV as well, called Prelord. Prelude to Glory. I'm going to run down that, just kind of the results, nothing special. And then on Saturday night on Twitch, they had All Glory, which really wasn't nothing impact. It was more indie kind of guys. So kind of run down that too as well. We're going to hit Bound for Glory first. Uh, first match on the show was Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. So the winner of this match, Call Your Shot Gauntlet match, got to choose whatever title they went for. Um, so it was basically a cup. You get to basically cash that cup in on any title in Impact Wrestling. It was actually intergender and men and women in it. Um, they've been doing a lot of those intergender matches, especially with Tessa Blanchard. And Jordan Grace um, even said that if she wins it, she was in it. If she won it, she was going to team up with Tessa Blanchard and go for the Impact Tag Titles. So I don't know how I feel about the men versus women matches. A lot of stuff they've done with Tessa, Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan over time and Impact has been pretty decent. Um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see where it comes out. There was 20 people in this. It really wasn't a gauntlet match. It was more like a Royal Rumble match. So basically two started. Every two, every minute somebody else came out. And eliminations were over the top rope. You couldn't call it a Royal Rumble, but it was basically what it was. So um, they had a match at... Um, 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 to do, I can't talk today. Prelord, Prelude to Glory um, street fight between Ace Austin and Eddie Edwards. Was that the match they did this? No, Shira was number 20. He was in a match. Where's his match at? I messed around on a weekly show because they had a match where Shearer won it and he got to be number 20. And uh, the loser came out number one. It was Eddie versus Shira. Um, so Eddie Edwards ended up being number one. Obviously, anytime you're number one in any type of match like this, it is a uh, downfall. Um, but the participants were Eddie Edwards and then both members of Reno Scum, whatever the fuck their names are. Cousin Jake um, of the Deaner, of the Deaners. Which is, is, his other name is Jake something from AAW, really talented wrestler. Uh, Riot Raju of Deji Hit Squad. Now this one was kind of funny. They had a surprise, a couple surprises. We had come to find out Joey Ryan has signed with Impact Wrestling, which is awesome. But when Joey Ryan comes out, the little moniker on the TV screen said Cody Deaner. I'm like, oh, that's not Cody Deaner. It's Joey, Joey fucking Ryan. Um, Havoc. Uh, Rosemary, Madman Fulton, Cody Diener, uh, Johnny Slinger, Jordan Grace, Swoggle was there, Hornswoggle was there, Kira Hogan, uh, Raw Singh, Tommy Dreamer, Kylie Ray. I thought she retired from wrestling, she retired from AEW, but now she's an Impact and she did sign, they said. So I don't know what's up with that. Follow Ball, Sabu, fuck, we do not need to see ECW guys any longer. And Sierra, 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 he uh, part of the Dizzy Hit Squad, real talented guy. He's been there before. They've kind of changed his characters. Final four came down to Eddie Edwards, Sierra, 
Follow Ball in Madman Fulton. Eddie Edwards ended up winning this. Um, so it was actually really good. I ended up giving it a three star. Uh, it was it was intriguing. It was delightful to watch. It wasn't like, fuck, is this over yet? Because you're kind of wondering how they're going to do this. Shara is kind of a guy they've been pushing lately here. It's like, okay, is he the next big thing? Which I think he can. He's got the look. He's got the ability in the ring. He can be something. But then with Eddie, they've been having this feud with him and Ace Austin. Matter of fact, Ace Austin has a shirt that says Austin 316. And on the back of it, it says, I just banged your wife. I mean, there's been a few between Alicia Edwards, Eddie's wife, her being friends with uh, Ace Austin, and Ace Austin, well, obviously wanting more, just fucking with Eddie, and there's been a whole thing here. So it's like, you kind of, are they going to end? Ace Austin was also in the ladder match for the X Division title later. So are we going to follow that, or are we going to do something else with this gauntlet? Then my thought was at one point was Madman Fulton winning. Steamy Zane, he's part of the OVE with Steamy Zane. Zane is part is Steamy Zane is that Sam Callahan. Steamy Callahan, he's part of OVE. Steamy Callahan, Steamy Callahan has a world title match later. So it's like, what kind of storylines are going to come out of this? But Eddie wins the Call, call Your Shot Gauntlet, which is great. Finally going to push him. Please, dear God, put a fucking title on him. I hate the hardcore Eddie Edwards. Uh, next up, we had the knockout title line. We had Tally Valkyrie, the longest reigning Impact Women's Champion. <sighs> I see what they've done here when I keep saying this. Gail and, um, oh my god. Somebody else, I can't, can't remember who it was now, had it when it was TNA knockout title longer. Since they changed the name to Impact, she is the longest reigning Impact Knockouts Champion. Even though the lineage of the Knockouts Champion goes back to the TNA days. Trust me, I was like, bullshit. She is not the longest reigning champion. Gail had it fucking 300 days. Um, t and she was t Tyler Valkyrie versus uh, Tenille Dashwood. Nice signing here for the Women's Vision and t Impact Wrestling for Tenille Dashwood. She was a Ring of Honor. I liked her there. I don't know why she left. She was doing with, with the faction of Light Blood. It was kind of cool, but here she is. And uh, she ended up not, you know, Tyler Backer ended up retaining here. Short match versus Tennille. I'm going to give it two and a half stars. It was pretty decent to watch. It wasn't just god awful. Tyler Backer is probably the third or fourth best woman in Impact. Obviously, Tesha Blanchard, Gor Jordan Grace. Um. Wow. Tim Nash was pretty good. There's another one that's really fucking good. I can't. Oh, Kira Hogan. She's, I mean, enough to uncover, but she's really ta uber talented. Uh, so Tyler, Tyler Backerly retained the knockouts title. Next up, we had the uh, Impact Tag Titles on the line. We had EV, ECW guys of uh, Rhino and RVD. God. Damn, ECW, go away. You guys are in your 50s. You don't need to be wrestling any longer. Uh, versus Willie Mack and Rich Swan, which has been a really good tag team. I kind of like them. Kind of the uh, LA guy, kind of guys from LA. The hood of LA they used to talk about. Versus the North, which is Josh Alexander and Ethan Page. Ethan Page is well more talented than people give him credit for. Uh, the only really exciting that happened in this was really wasn't exciting. It's like, fuck. RVD super kicked Rhino on purpose. Turned on him. We don't need a heel RVD at this point. We don't need a RVD versus Rhino match. I don't want to see it. I know all you ECW alums are like, oh, fuck yeah, that's going to be awesome, man. Uh, it'd be more intriguing to see Hogan versus Flair. Because you know what? One of them would have a heart attack. These two guys, I don't know if they can carry a match, either one of them. It's like, come on guys, step aside, let the, let, let the young talent go. But anyway, we end up with a retained by the North. Um, I gave it three and a half, it was actually really intriguing. Where are they going to go with RVD and Rhino, we'll have to see, wait and see. Next up, we had a very unique matchup, kind of the, one of the big type matchups for the car. We had Michael Elgin versus Mayor Fuji. Um, Namchi Marifuji, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Um, Pro Wrestling Noah, New Japan. One of the 
one of the talented guys from one, another talented Japanese guy. Um, Elgin had his history with him, being over in Japan for a while. Called him out uh, recently, set up this match here. Holy shit. Michael Elgin is fucking so goddamn talented. Has zero fucking charisma, but is one of the most talented guys in the ring. He's a shit. He's a white Shelton Benjamin. Um, most people should get that. You know, uber talented, can't fucking talk on the mic. You know, that kind of guy. Uh, but goddamn it, uh, Elliot and Mary Fuji just went at it. I mean, just two hoss fighting, mat wrestling. They tried to fly a little bit. It just had had it all. A uh, lot of false finishes. It's like, holy shit, you really got into it. I ended up getting it four and a quarter. It was actually my match of the night. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was good. I enjoyed it. Michael Long ended up getting the victory. So it's going to be really exciting to see where they go with this. Um, next up, we had a five-way for the X title. Five-way ladder match for the X title. Inner Ginger, Tessa Blanchard was in it. So we had Tessa Blanchard versus Ace Austin versus AC Romero. If you've never seen AC Romero, um, big guy, big, big, big boy, big horse. Um, Avalanche from back in the day at WCW. That kind of guy, you know, Vader, kind of that, a little bit bigger than Vader, Yokozuna type almost. Versus Daga versus the X Division champion, Jake Crest. Five way ladder match. Wow, what a freaking match this was. Um, of ladder matches, it was, I would say, top 10 of the year. Um, as for X Division title matches, obviously it was good. I mean, there's obviously some that have been better, but. Seeing Tessa Blanchard in a ladder match versus the guys was really fucking intriguing. She took some spots. Matter of fact, the last spot she took right before the, the uh, guy ran up and won it, she got knocked off the top of the ladder and she took a hard hit. I mean, they had tables set up, places they were taking table shots. Um, but yeah, it was really good. So I'm watching this match going, okay. Jay Crisk, exhibition champion. Part of OVE with Sammy Callahan, who's going for the world title. So, okay, so the shot for glory, kind of trying to piece together what do you think is going to happen here. So, with Eddie winning the call your shot, we have Ace Austin in this match. I'm like, fuck. They cannot put a title on that feud, can they? Well, they did. Ace Austin, your new X Division champion, he ended up pushing Tesla Blanchard off the top of the ladder. Four star match for me. Ace Austin winning. Looks like we're going to get the Ace Austin Eddie Edwards uh, match definitely for the title now. So that's kind of cool to see what they're going to do with that. Now, there is one thing that they have had in Impact Wrestling in, in the recent years they haven't talked about recently. There is a thing called Option C. You're able to cash in, I don't know if it's a certain time of year or whenever. But you're able to cash in your X Division Championship for a shot at the world title. Austin Aries did it twice. Chris Saban did it. I was hoping they would have Jake Crisp retain here. Sammy Callahan win the world title. And then Jake cash in versus Sammy. OVE versus OVE. But we're not going to do that. We're going to probably more than likely end up Eddie Edwards versus Ace Austin. Now with the title. Eventually, it's going to end up for the custody of Alicia Edwards. We'll see where they go with that. But Ace Austin, your new X Division champion. Next up, just because another wrestling company does something doesn't mean everyone has to fucking do it. Let's back, let's back, back, uh, rewind here to the '90s. This little sport called MMA was getting started with UFC. We had a couple guys that uh, were with a wrestling background, were in UFC that were really good. A guy named Dan Severin, and a guy named Ken Shamrock. As we know, Ken Shamrock was the first ever NWA TNA World Champion. Ken Shamrock was a, I believe, he was Intercontinental Champion in an old double double F back in the day. He's a UFC Hall of Famer. Um, back in 08, we had Frank Tripp. Another MMA UFC guy feuding with Kurt Angle and, and uh, Karen Angle at the time, now Karen Jarrett. 
Fast forward a little bit, we have Brock Lesnar, we have Bobby Lashley, we have the Matt Riddles of the world, Shayna Baszler, all kind of going from the UFC range over into WWE, over to pro wrestling. Here recently we see we've got King Vasquez doing it, we've got Brock Lesnar going back and forth. So Impact wanted a piece of this, so what we're going to do, we're going to have Freight Trip train Moose, 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 for a match versus Ken Shamrock. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know what to say about that. Ken Shamrock is 54 years old. So it's like WWE gets the current champions, Tyson Fury, Kane Blasquez, brought over Brock Lesnar, gets a Matt Riddle, gets people in the prime. Well, they got to pay for them. They're going to pay for the penny. Impact goes, we'll get Hall of Famers, fuck, they're cheaper. <laughs> So we have Moose versus Ken Shamrock. Moose was trained by Frank Tripp. <sighs> yeah, this match what happened. Um, yeah, Moose won this match. Um, two and a quarter star. Wasn't good. It was just, a, it was like, come on guys. You're, it's like you're copying up WWE. It, come up with your own stuff. There's an idea. But anyway, so yeah, that happened. Um, then next up, we had the main event for the Impact title, which became no disqualification. We had Sammy Callahan versus the Machine Brian Cage. Sammy Callahan, in the last few weeks, have been just fucking with Brian Cage and Melissa Santos' his wife. Um, recently, they've recently got married, actually got married on Impact. I mean, literally, he's been, he handcuffed freaking uh, Brian Cage to the ring, ring ropes, and Tombstone Los Santos. So it's been a really crazy, almost blood feud between these guys. This match did, I, I don't like this point, I think it was good. I mean, it was hardcore, it was right down Sami Zayn's alley. Um, but the machine, Brian Cage, is just, I mean, he's so talented that, again, he's so fucking uber talented, but really doesn't have a lot of charisma. It doesn't really, you know, he doesn't have great mic skills. If he had, Mike skills and the ability has been in the ring. He still be with WWE. Um, WWE would have took him by now. Um, but yeah, Baron Cage ended up getting the victory here over Sammy Callahan in a four star classic. Um, I mean, three four star matches on this show. Overall, the show was good. Uh, we had the new X Division champion. We had the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. We got Mayor Fuji and Elegant. I think Impact Wrestling, they're on the upswing. Will they ever be to the level of WWE? No. Will they ever be to the level of AEW? No. In the world world of professional wrestling, I would say they're probably a good number four. I would say it's WWE. I would say it's New Japan. AEW. Probably an Impact. Then a Ring of Honor. Then maybe like a progress, and then kind of down online. Obviously, here recently we've learned that New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to have a New Japan NJPW of America. It's going to be American part of part of NJPW. Their NJPW recently bought Stardom, so I mean they're already expanding. They've already been doing a lot of shows in the U.S. They're going to still do the the Japanese roster in the U.S., but they're also going to have a U.S. roster. So that's just going to be off the chain, because obviously NXT is talking about going to Japan. NXT, WWE tried to buy stardom and got outbid by New Japan. So when NXT Japan hits, you're going to have U.S. having a company in Japan. You're going to have Japan having a company in the U.S. All this does is create the more competition, is the better it is for us fans. The more shows we have like this, where this is a good show, this is probably the best show of the year for Impact Wrestling. I did want to just hit on a few things on those other two shows they did. The Prelude to Glory, which was on Friday night. Um, they had De Desmond Alexander versus Sammy Callahan. I thought it was a really good match. Sammy Callahan got the victory. I gave it two and three-quarter star. They did have an uh, intergender tag match. Brian Cage teamed up with Tessa Blanchard versus Jake Crisk and Madman Fulton. Two and three-quarter star. Cage and Blanchard got the victory. 
They had a street fight between Ace Austin and Eddie Edwards, which was three and a half star. I really can't wait to see that for the X title. I think it's going to be awesome. Because what I think is going to happen at this point is I think Eddie is going to cash in his uh, Collier Shot Glory uh, Gauntlet uh, Cup, get the X title, and then eventually cash that X title in for a world title shot. I want to see Eddie back in the world title hunt. Uh, there was a six woman tag match um, Kira Hogan, Madison Rain, Tyler Valkyrie versus Jordan Grace, Rosemary, and Tennille Dashwood. I did give it two and a quarter. Um, Desi Head Squad versus uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Um, Swan and Mack ended up winning, but I did give it two and a quarter. I mean, that was about it. I mean, there was a six man tag at the main event of it, which was Michael Logan and the, the North versus Rhino, RBD, and Marifuji. It's two and a half. Nothing really special there. Just a few other just kind of weird matches. Um, nothing that was like, oh my god, this match was great. On the uh, All Glory, Impact Wrestling All Glory, it was on Twitch. Uh, it was really just nobody's. I mean, it was Space Monkey versus Robert Anthony. Unless you've watched Championship Wrestling of Hollywood or you've watched some just, you know, um, Smart, Mark, uh, Smart Mark videos, shows. Uh, you probably wouldn't know who Robert Anthony is. He's actually a really talented guy. I give that match two and a quarter. Um, they had a three-way between Mark Wheeler, Alex Zane, and Blake Christian. I give it three. Blake Christian and Alex Zane do a lot of stuff in GCW, Game Changer Wrestling. Um, they had a Wrestle Revolver World Title match between champion Larry D and AC Romero. Um, AC Romero ended up winning that. I give it two and a quarter. Um, that's really all. There's like five, six matches on that card. Um, other than a triple threat for the women's title, for the ZLO women's title, they had champion Lainey Luck versus Kyla Ray versus Shotzi, uh, Shotzi Blackheart. I give it three and a quarter. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart actually got signed from Evolve, shined to uh, NXT by William Regal. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up the uh, Bound for Glory weekend. Um, three shows, I mean, some decent matches. The actual Bound for Glory itself was good. If you get a chance to check that out on Fight, you, you might want to because it was definitely worth watching, I think. I mean, I could be wrong, but I did enjoy it last night. Um, so that's going to wrap this up. As always, thanks for watching the Robert Sports Show. And don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader, sports channel content.